Hey TCPS friends, today we're going to be learning how to draw an Easter Bunny. We'll be using a piece of white copy paper, a pencil, a sharpie, and something to color with. I'll be using markers. This project is intended for third grade through fifth grade, but anybody is welcome to follow along. To start your Easter Bunny, you will want your piece of paper to be up and down horizontal. You're going to take your pencil and you're going to start by drawing the bunny's head. Now the bunny's head is a kind of complicated shape, so I'm going to teach you two ways on how you can draw it. First, you can go freehand. like this. And if you notice the head shape, it is rounded at the top, it curves in a little bit, and then it is rounded at the bottom. So that's one way to draw it. Your second way to draw it is if you draw a circle. So your circle that I've just drawn is going to be in the very about center of your page. Then you're going to draw an oval touching directly underneath it. Now the oval underneath it is to come out a little bit from the sides of the circle, but not all the way to the sides. Then from here, you're gonna follow the line of your circle, come in and then connect it to your oval. You're gonna do the same on this side. You're gonna follow the line of your circle, come in a little bit, and then connect it to the line of your oval. Now I'm going to erase my original shape lines of the circle and the oval on the inside where they touch. And I noticed that this kind of curves in a little bit more than I would like. So all I'm simply going to do is just kind of readjust it to kind of make it more of the shape I am wanting. So there's your first step, your bunny head. From here, you're going to draw his eyes. His eyes are going to be kind of far apart, and they're going to be on either side of the first circle shape. You drew and his eyes are an almond shape. An almond shape is pointed at the top and then kind of rounded at the bottom. So like an almond or like an egg and then same on the other side. Kind of pointed at the top and then rounded at the bottom. From here we're going to get his um, nose snout area. So you're going to draw down in this oval, you're going to draw a circle right in the center. Um, your circle, you'll actually want to come down a little bit past your oval line to kind of make his nose snout area look like it is coming out from his face. So I just made that circle a little bit bigger. And then again, making sure that the circle comes down just a little bit below. From here, you're going to kind of draw a V, a wide V. This V is for the bunny's nose. And then you're going to do his little mouth. So his mouth comes straight down from the point of the V and then you're going to make a J and a J. So, so far we have a circle and an oval for his head. We connected the two almond shaped eyes, a circle for his snout, a V for his nose, and then a backwards J and a regular J for his mouth. 
From here, you're going to draw his ears. Now, his ears are just simply two triangles at the top of his head. So you're going to draw one triangle and then two triangles. Now, bunnies have really big ears so you can make the ears go all the way up to the top of the page. If you want to have some fun with your bunny ear, sometimes I like to fold over an ear to make his ear look like it's flopping. So how you do that is you erase the top of your ear like this. And then from here, you're going to draw an upside down triangle. And this will make it look like the bunny's ear is flopping. From here, we are going to want to add in some texture. Now bunnies have fur all over them. And so to make it look like they have fur, we need to show the texture of their fur. Now if you remember our principles of art and design, Tia Texture is one of them. So to get some texture, we're going to draw little hatch marks or little lines all around the bunny's face. I'm going to start with around the eyes. And I'm starting around the eyes because this is a round shape. So we want to make sure that our hatch marks follow the shape of your head. And then I'm going to fill in the whole head with little hatch marks just like this. Now to create some variety, I am making some short and some long and they're not all in one line. They're kind of all over the place. So I'm going to continue that right now. Now that all of my cross hatching texture is done for the bunny's fur, I'm going to move on to the ears. So in the ears, I'm going to create a second ear on the inside. And this is just to kind of show the outside of the bunny's ear versus the inside. So I'm going to add just a few more texture lines in here. Notice how I'm following the direction by going diagonally in the ear. So just like I followed the direction around the eye, and then I also did the same in a radial circular design around the snout. I'm going diagonally for the ear texture to make it look as realistic as possible. I'm gonna come over to this ear. Now because we made it flop, I am only going to outline a make a second line on just this inside part. So again, I'm going to follow the direction. And then since this is the back of his ear, this will also have texture for our lines because it's not the inside of his ear. And again, I'm following the direction of his ear and I'm going to continue down on this other side. So from here, we have all of our texture lines done. Now I'm going to be able to take my Sharpie and outline everything. Now I have finished sharpieing my bunny, but if you do not have a sharpie at home, you may also use a black marker to get the texture lines on your bunny, which will give the same effect, or a gray marker will work as well. Once you have outlined all of your lines, you now need to erase your pencil lines. I almost forgot that our bunny needs a body, so I'm going to take my pencil and draw a curved line 
coming from the bottom of his face. Make sure you don't get it from the direct side of his cheek, but come in just a little bit. But you also don't want it touching each other. And another curved line on the other side. And then you're going to continue the process of your hatch marks going down his body. And then you'll want to um, outline it in Sharpie as well. Now that our bunny is complete, it is time to move on to the background. Now in your background, I'm gonna ask that you fill it with a pattern. If you remember, pattern is one of our elements of art and design, Paula pattern, it's anything that repeats itself. I'm inspired by this old pencil case I found. I really like these little triangles and squares and things, so that's what I'm gonna attempt to draw in the background of mine. You are welcome to draw any sort of pattern you would like, whether that be shapes like a triangle, or if you wanna go for flowers like springtime or some other different type of pattern like stripes, you're more than welcome to do that. If your pattern needs a ruler, so a straight edge, and you do not have one, go ahead and just find a book or a journal or something with a hard edge lying around your house and that will get you the same concept. Now that my background pattern is done drawing, I'm gonna begin coloring it. I'm going to be using markers, but you are welcome to use colored pencils or crayons or whatever other kind of coloring utensil you have. I would suggest using bright colors on your background since this is a springtime project. So bright pinks or greens, yellows, a bright blue, anything that is kind of bright or pastel, so like a soft color would be great for your background. Once your background is fully colored in with your pattern, your project is all done. I would love to see your guys' results, so have your parents take a picture of your project and post it onto the Tennessee Christian Preparatory School Facebook Families page.